Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Friday, November 14th, 2014. In this video, I wanted to cover the uh, gold stocks, uh, gold and silver stocks, the mining sector, as well as the metals themselves, gold and silver. Um, before I get into the charts, I wanted to mention yesterday I published a video covering uh, crude oil, coal stocks, and the U.S. dollar. In fact, I spent probably the bulk of that video was spent discussing the US dollar because crude oil and coal are so highly correlated or more accurately inversely correlated uh, meaning the dollar goes up and they go down and vice versa uh, gold also has a very strong inverse correlation to the dollar um, there are some periods of disconnects that can last for weeks or even months and I'll talk on that here in a minute but with that being said, when trading gold in the gold mining sector, uh, you always want to keep a, uh, an eye on the dollar, um, and it really helps to have the charts align. In other words, if you're bullish on gold at the time, you should be bearish on the dollar, or at least the chart should be confirming uh, either the dollar's in a downtrend or a likely reversal point. Now, what we're trying to do here is catch a bottom on gold. So obviously, the dollar's been in a strong uptrend, the gold's been in a strong downtrend. But once again, the case was made yesterday, so if you don't have an interest in, in crude oil or coal, um, but you do are interested in the gold stocks, you may want to take a look at the beginning part of that video where I talked about the dollar as well as some of the other key currencies, uh, the euro, uh, the yen, which have a really big weighting and a big impact on the U.S. dollar index. So, all right, with that being said, let's move on. We're looking at a gold weekly chart. This is a 20-year time frame. Uh, this encompasses the entire bull market of, in gold, which kicked off. We had a, a roughly double bottom low back in 1999 and early 2001. And then from 01, that really launched the uh, the new secular bull market in gold that we've been in since. Uh, of course, we've been in a secular, secular bear market since 2011, you know, when gold peaked out. Um, And we've even gone on to break below this uh, uh, uptrend line, which I've harped on quite a bit in the past. Uh, let's. I'm gonna. Go, I'll go ahead and zoom in here. We're, we're let's let's cut this down to a 10-year time period so we can see a little bit better what's happened and, and what's gone on recently. Okay, update. Let's see. All right. So we're looking at the same uh, trend line. If, uh, and uh, is talked about a lot. For those of you who follow the site, you'll know that you know all the way back in the mid 2013, um, this is where I began getting bullish on gold. Even before we got there, uh, that was my downside target. And even back up a little more, I don't know how many of you have followed the site since this time, but gold was one of the longest standing shorts that I had on the site. Uh, although I've been a gold bull in in the last couple of years. I was a gold bear at the top here and most of the way down got out somewhere in there. That was again one of the longest standing short trades on the site. And then I just kind of left it alone as it chopped around and really was eyeballing this long term trend line which we had some phenomenal trades off there uh, especially in the mining stocks. Uh, we were fortunate enough to get out the highs, recycled back in, caught it again on the next tag of the trend line. And then, you know, so that's, we had some great trades back here, some great in and out timing. And then it's been tough since then. You know, I tried another shot again at the trend line here. Uh, we had this triple bottom support that I talked about, which was another objective entry. But recently that triple bottom support broke and gave way. So when that happened, I had talked about leading up to that, that I had an alternative scenario at the time. My primary scenario when we were approaching these triple bottom lows was to see gold form a triple bottom and then move on higher. And once we broke below, my former alternative scenario has now become my primary scenario, and that was to see a flush out move, a break below these triple bottom lows, which we're gonna zoom in here on a second on the daily chart. And uh, I still believe that to be the case. Now, why am I bullish? Why am I not looking for you know, a new secular bear market, you know, continuation of this bear market in gold? Uh, anything is possible, but this weekly chart tells me a lot. I see strong bullish divergences. If we look at this, the blue line here, the down sloping blue line, um, we're looking at prices making a series of lower lows against the indicators, most indicators and price momentum oscillators uh, making higher highs. So here's the RSI. We have positive divergence in place there. On the PPO, which I like to use on a weekly time frame, very similar to the MACD, 
we have what I've referred to as potential divergence. Potential because right now the PPO is still heading south. You know, we're, we're, we're still moving lower. What we'll need to see is the PPO curl back up here, make a bullish crossover, and then form or put in place a higher low. That will then uh, confirm, uh, we'll have the confirmed bullish divergence on the PPO, and those that's rare to see on a weekly chart. Rarely do you see you know, confirmed divergence on a weekly chart, especially spanning nearly two years like this, and not see at least a substantial counter trend rally. Um, more than likely what I'm looking for is a new, you know, resumption of the, the secular bull market. Uh, but again, one, one, one thing at a time, and we're going to zoom in here in a second to the daily chart. One more thing to note, I had put up uh, Fibonacci retracements. Uh, again, when I was on that 20-year time frame, uh, these green lines, and this may be hard to see on YouTube. Hopefully you're watching this in high definition and uh, in full screen format. You can see it a lot better, make out the uh, annotations on these charts. But the green line here uh, is a, the 50% Fibonacci retracement. That is off the entire bull market run from the 2000, uh, actually from the the actual low was in 1999. And uh, so we're coming up now on a 50% retracement of the entire bull market run from 1999 up until the 2011 highs. And right now, if you look over here, there's a series of red lines. What I did is this is a major reaction low. We had this major correction in gold back in 2008 into the, uh, you know, during the meltdown. And so I started fibs here. So this is what you call a fib cluster. Right now we have a uh, uh, some fibs in close proximity at least uh, not exactly overlapping it would be nice to see that but point being this is a 61.8 retracement line right here the red line of that move off the uh, 2008 lows so right now we're right about that 61.8 which is a key fib retracement level not far below we have the 50% um, and again bullish divergences a very healthy retracement so far of the entire bull market, especially if we get down to the 50% level, which I don't believe we do. But uh, let's go ahead and move on and look at uh, GLD on a daily. Okay, this is the, sorry, this is a GLD daily chart, daily time frame. We're looking at a two-year time period here on GLD. And um, here's the triple bottom low, clear as day. You know, I talked about this quite a bit, and I'm sure just about everybody else uh, follows gold. Uh, and uses technical analysis. Uh, even those that don't probably were talking about the triple bottom, you know, back in mid 2013, late 2014, and then just more recently in early October. There's our triple bottom. You know, at the time, my my primary scenario was to see prices find support there and continue higher, and that didn't pan out. And this is where my alternative scenario kicked in, which I had mentioned before, to see a flush out move, a washout move below there. And as you can see, technical analysis does work. Once that support level was broken, it didn't just, prices didn't just meander on down through there. There was a huge gap down. And that is because, you know, prices traded there below there overnight. A trader saw that we were going to break below those, the triple bottom lows. And you saw a lot of selling. So far, I like what I see. We did see that impulsive gap down. We even saw some follow-up selling, some panic selling. A lot of shorts pile in, longs throw in the towel. But so far, as you can see here, gold has really hung in there, and we're we're threatening now to backfill this gap. If we can get up in there, get above this 113-ish level, and then move up to about the 114, I think it's around 114.70, we'll call it. As I said, we want, we want to see it get above 115 to be safe and, and remain above there. So we have a couple of possibilities here. Uh, maybe we go ahead and backfill that gap, which is my expectation, at least to see a backfill. Now, the bearish scenario would be to see prices turn down after backfilling. They would be testing this resistance level. Former support becomes resistance. So we would see prices backfill and then turn back down lower. And it would be very bearish, in my opinion, if we break below those recent lows around 109.80-ish or so, you know, put in uh, right after that, a couple days after we broke support there. So that would be bearish. Uh, my bullish scenario, my primary scenario remains that we will regain this level once we do. And if we do, uh, that would be a bullish technical event. You'd see some short covering. Those that shorted gold below here, uh, you'd probably see quite a bit of new buyers step back in. Uh, once this this level is regained, so that's gold. Right now, I can't make a very solid case in the short term. 
you know, for example, yesterday with USO, I made a case on long-term case on 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 oil, uh, oil at a at a very good multi-year support level, and then I zoomed into the 120-minute chart, and I have a very nice bullish falling wedge, which we're just on the bottom of, and uh, strong bullish divergences in place below that wedge to confirm it, and uh, so, you know, in other words, long-term view, just like gold. I, right now, I'm I'm bullish on crude longer term. I could make a shorter term case and that's why I went ahead with the entry yesterday. Gold, it's still aggressive at this point to enter here. I had mentioned in recent weeks that I probably wouldn't be adding any more to gold until I saw this level regained. Although I am pretty confident it will be regained and I may nibble add a little more exposure to gold. Or I should say the gold mining stocks, which we'll get into in a second here. So there's gold from both a long term. We looked at the 20 year and 10 year weekly charts. We're looking at a daily chart here. And really, you know, if you want to play it safe, you want to see this level regained. And when I say regained, you know, the longer you wait, the more confirmation there is. But if we regain that, it's possible to be see a very sharp move coming up. So it depends what type of trader you are. And uh, I, I've talked numerous times over the past couple of years with these gold stocks are so volatile. My preference is to keep position sizes small, scale in. You know, I'm in these gold stocks. I'm looking at these for a long term, you know, trade. I'm looking for returns in a lot of these miners for 100% or more if this works out. So, you know, I'm not short term focused here. I'm not short term swing trading these. I'll scale in. I'll take small positions. I will add and I will only become, uh, you know, bring it up to a full position if and when we clearly regain this level, probably at least on a weekly basis. At that point, I'd probably be fully committed. Uh, that doesn't mean my entire portfolio, just the, the percent of my portfolio that I decide to allocate to gold, silver, and the uh, the mining stock. So that's where we're at. little work to be done, uh, but so far looking looking good. Okay, let's talk about the other shiny metal real quickly here. Here's silver, this chart. If I'm not mistaken, I have a live link to this chart on the site. Uh, multiple scenarios were recently listed. Here was a, a very, this this support was very similar to that triple bottom in gold. And uh, this was a key support level, well watched by, by many, I imagine, in the, uh, you know, as far as silver. We're looking at spot silver prices, by the way, guys, here. This is a... Uh, what is this a 10 or 20 year weekly chart on silver 10 year weekly chart on silver spot prices just like gold what i'm looking at here bullish divergences they're very rare to see on the weekly time frames when you see them something to note we see the rsi becoming very deeply oversold here even as prices went on to make a new low we became oversold but less oversold so we have positive divergence as noted by this blue uptrend line we have potential positive divergence on the PPO, just like as with gold. And uh, I had a few different scenarios here. Obviously, this one has been eliminated, uh, the blue line, which is to see it bounce off support level. Uh, my second alternative, which is my primary scenario, is to see this flush out move, just like as with gold, where we have this wash out move and then prices come back up. This is a potential trend line that may come into play, this blue trend line. I'm not crazy about it because we only have a couple reactions off of it. Uh, so, you know, something to watch. Maybe if we do have a, re a reversal and prices move up quickly, that might pause at that trend line. And, of course, if that does prove to be a valid trend line, we may have this slightly uh, or this descending price channel. And we could see prices move all the way down here and then reverse. Um, the more bearish scenario would be to see these uh, uh, divergences negated, taken out, to see the prices continue to fall, the PPO make a lower low, um, and uh, that that's certainly a possibility. But uh, as of now, I do favor, you know, resumption of, uh, or uh, I should say a new uptrend, a reversal of this downtrend that we've been in since uh, uh, early 2011 in silver. Okay, I mentioned in the beginning of this video the correlation or the inverse correlation between the U.S. dollar and gold. What we're looking at, the uh, candlestick, the green and red candlesticks are the uh, price of the GLD. This is a 10-year weekly chart of GLD. And the white line here is the uh, U.S. dollar index. And as you can see, at most points in time when the dollar is, uh, the dollar is falling, as it was here, gold is going up. There are disconnects. This is what I wanted to talk on really quickly. Um, 
There's a theme I should have mentioned earlier. I uh, have mentioned it recently on the site. Uh, from a valuation basis, I can build a great case right now for the miners, regardless of what happens to the dollar and somewhat regardless of what happens to gold. Now, keep in mind, the miners do follow gold, uh, but there's also some disconnects there from time to time. And let's just look at the dollar. Here's a case where the dollar was going up. When we go, come to the left of this chart, the dollar was in an uptrend. And uh, again, we're looking at a 10-year chart. So this is a good almost a year uh, that we're looking at here where the, both the dollar and the gold and gold prices were moving up. Then the, the regular relationship kicked in. The dollar peaked and uh, fell all the way into mid-2008 while gold moved up. Uh, dollar bottomed, gold topped. So you can see the relationship. But once again, look at this disconnect here. Um, there were, were a lot of distortions given around the uh, financial crisis, but the financial crisis, or at least uh, most of it, was over by late 2009. We saw the dollar bottom here, a very strong rally in the dollar, and yet gold continued to rally alongside with it. So there's a disconnect that lasted for several months. Um, then the dollar pulled back and gold continued to rise, you know, which it should with a falling dollar. And... Um, you know, since then we've seen some disconnects. Now, what I'm noticing recently, we've had this super strong surge in the dollar. Everybody knows the dollar has been on fire. And um, what I'm noticing is gold has pretty much been sold out. That correlation, yes, it has fallen, uh, but not so much over the last few months with this huge surge in the dollar. So uh, just keep that in mind that the disconnects can take place from time to time. Okay, let's talk valuations real quick, and let's talk the gold mining sector. I've, you know, I've made it clear over time that uh, when I'm bullish on gold, I play the miners just because it is, you know, you get the gold right, you, the move in the miners is going to be often considerably more because they typically are a leverage play on gold. So um, let's take a look here. This is the Huey, the MX Gold Bug Index. Uh, similar to the GTX, we just have a little bit longer uh, price history. So we're looking at a 10-year weekly chart now. The green candlesticks represent the Huey. This was a financial meltdown in 2008 where everything got sold. Uh, there were just portfolios. Portfolios were being liquidated. Uh, so we had this this purge down. And this is I mentioned this just the other day, I believe last week, uh, from a valuation basis. The case on gold stocks is very compelling in my opinion. Um, we have Huey or the gold stocks and GDX as well trading right about where it was back at the financial at the uh, you know trough of the financial meltdown. So right around the same levels. Yet let's take a look at this blue line. This is GLD, the uh, ETF GLD. And what I'll do here is just hit those lows. And as you can see, G GLD was trading uh, right there. If you look in the upper left hand corner of the screen where the pop up box is. About in the middle, uh, just above that that horizontal line, it says GLD. The price was 71.34. Okay, keep in mind that was the right at the bottom here when the uh, Huey was down around uh, uh, 150 or so. Here we are today. So gold prices, the the gold index is down to where it was at the 2008 lows. Yet GLD is trading around 113. Now that is about 60% higher. So today. Gold prices are about 60% higher than they were back at the bottom when gold stocks were trading at the same level in 2008. So from a pure valuation point of view, that makes you know gives gives us a lot of value here. Even if gold continues to drift down or trade in this range, um, that speaks volumes to me. Uh, one other thing to take a look at is the price of oil. Here we go, USO. Let's get rid of gold. Let's change this to another color here just to make it easier. So here's USO. This is the crude oil ETF. And again, what we're looking at here at the lows, let's just put my cursor on there. Again, it's hard to see the blue line underneath the candlestick. So what I'm doing is putting my uh, crosshairs on the lows on the Huey, which bottomed uh, looks about to, you know late October 2008. The Huey was at 168, hit a low of 150.27 there that day, uh, or that week, I should say, the close of that week. Um, USO was at $53, so oil was uh, at least measured by the USO, $53. Where are we today? Uh, if we look at that, USO is at $28, roughly. 
So, you know, as I mentioned last week, doing the quick math, I think that's about 30%. So what do we have? We have gold prices about 60% higher than they were the last time gold stocks were trading at this level. And oil or their energy costs, which is one of the largest cost components to these miners. It takes a tremendous amount of energy to pull gold out of the ground, process it, run these big trucks, the machinery. Um, so again, from a valuation perspective, uh, I'm making a case here to that uh, gold stocks are, are looking very reasonable, especially if you have a longer term time horizon. Again, I wish we had some very solid shorter term sell, uh, buy signals. Uh, we don't, but we're not far from there. I mean, if we have a, you know, gold continues to rally for a few more days, it's very possible it regains that triple bottom, um, former triple bottom support, which is now resistance. And then uh, we can see a nice move higher, especially if the dollar would co cooperate and and top out here soon and uh, that would really add some wind to the sails uh, behind uh, a moving gold okay to wrap up this video let's just now take a look at the actual charts of GDX and some of the the top holdings I'll look at these quickly and I'm only going to take a look at the weekly the long-term weekly charts because again as I said these stocks have been uh, getting pounded relentlessly in the last few months and the near-term charts just aren't that clear uh, at least I don't see a whole lot there there are some bullish developments here and there but for the most part I'm eyeing this as a you know playing the long game here on the gold stocks and and trying to build a case for a you know a lasting reversal so what we have here currently is a descending broadening wedge pattern forming in gold which is a potential bottoming pattern we've had these nice three tags to the bottom i mentioned this last week as well if we zoom in a little bit you can see we we hammered off the bottom of that pattern and uh so far we're moving up looking good and uh let's take a look at one more thing there we go i just wanted to add in the uh, ppo RSI, just as with the metals themselves, gold and silver, uh, we have um, bullish divergences in place, potential bullish divergences. We may go a little lower here, but I'm starting to see the PPO curl up here. That's a good sign. The RSI I've seen move up off, uh, you know, it peaked, bottomed out here, made it put in a lower low. Um, so uh, I'm sorry, a higher low so far. So we have bullish divergences beneath that descending broadening wedge pattern as we approach those former, uh, you know, 2008 lows. So there's a, you know, a bullish, potentially bullish setup forming here in, in the gold mining stocks, which again could propel these stocks. Even if we were to revisit the top of this wedge, you know, that would be a considerable move all the way from the, you know, well, where we were recently below 17 all the way up to, you know, call it 25 by the time we get there. Okay, to keep this video somewhat short, uh, I'll just run through some of the top holdings in um, in the GDX. What I've done here, this is, uh, I'm using the TC, TC2000 charting platform, and it's very easy. You can just click and get a view of all the holdings of an ETF or a sector. And what I've added, uh, I added a column to rank these by market cap. So we're gonna go through the largest, uh, starting with the largest holdings, I'll just run through about the top 10. And we'll just take a look at what I think is a common theme. And that common theme is a lot of these stocks are approaching or near their uh, previous uh, you know, multi-year lows, sometimes, some cases, all-time lows. Um, but either way, you know, GG, which is again, the largest in the group, uh, is above their, the 2008 lows, but we're, we have a similar uh, pattern here as we do in GDX, which obviously, because this is one of the largest holdings, uh, some divergence in place below. Here's ABX, Barrick Gold, some nice bullish divergences forming, setting up um, Barrick's trading at uh, either decade lows or all-time lows. I'd have to go back farther on the chart, but it doesn't matter. Uh, again, we have the nice bullish divergences in place. We're looking for you know some reversals here so far we have a nice little hammer uh last week on the weekly and let's we need some follow-up as i said to really help build a bearish uh, i'm sorry a bullish case these are resistance levels here these horizontal lines there's newmont um you know and if and keep in mind when trading these the miners for the most part, when you go with the bigger, more liquid names, you can take a uh, look at other things such as the, uh, the debt-to-equity ratio and, and other metrics like that. 
Um, but some of these bigger miners are safer play because they're going to be around. More than likely, you're not going to see a Barrick or a Newmont close the doors anytime soon, even if gold prices are continue to be soft for a while. So keep that in mind when trading these. And again, if you're new to investing or you're more risk adverse, go with the GDX. It's You're going to have, uh, you know, there's a shotgun approach already done for you. You can buy one ETF and have all the names in the, uh, or at least most of the, the senior miners in there. So uh, again, common theme here of uh, bullish divergences in place. You know, there's definitely some work to be done on the upside, but even if we go back and, uh, and, and test these, this uh, now resistance level from below, you're talking a decent move from about 18 and a half all the way up to the $21, $22 area. Uh, it's a nice tradable move, Frank, Franco, Nevada, not a lot there. It's actually held up very well if we look at that. Uh, Silver Wheat and Corp. Here's Ring Gold. Uh, nice pattern here. We're coming. This is a support line to keep an eye on. There, there is divergence in place below. Let's let's zoom out a little bit. Now we're looking at a 10-year chart. So again, you get the point. A lot of these stocks are testing those previous lows, which act as uh, should act as support. And while they're doing so, we have divergence in place. So I will take a, a take some time. Okay, I had a little snafu here in the video. I hit the pause button somewhere to change a chart setting and not uh, thought I had uh, turned the record feature back on. So I'm not actually sure where I stopped. I might have been talking for the last uh, minute or so here. Um, but what I've done is looked at uh, uh, some of the bigger names in the sector, and GDX on the top holdings and the the theme there's a common theme that I'm looking at and that is uh, most of these stocks or many of these stocks falling down to support levels a lot of those support levels were defined by the the, the 2008 lows and those that weren't uh, there there still seems to be a common theme that prices are making lower lows with pretty strong divergences setting up on the weekly time frame so from a longer term view the potential is there um, for a, a you know a, a permanent lasting reversal in these stocks, but we still need in the short term a little more technical evidence to to build that case you know to to help build that bullish case and say with a high degree of certainty that the uh, bear market in the gold stocks is over. So what I will do over the next uh, week or so here, I will dig down further into these charts and, and try to uh, put together a short list of the top picks in the sector, both uh, gold and silver stocks. And uh, hopefully I'll roll those out in, uh, you know, uh, through over the weekend or into early next week. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed.